Hey there guys, how's it going? So today is the day that I rank every single new release film I saw in 2019. All the good ones, all the bad ones, and all the mediocre ones too. I started doing this type of video last year just to kind of do something um, unique and different um, than top 10 favorite and top 10 least favorite videos, which I love those videos, those are awesome. This is kind of something that I like to do. It, uh, it gives me a chance to talk about every single movie I saw this year because I don't do movie reviews on my channel all that much. Um, so this is just kind of my chance to talk about all the new release movies I saw with my YouTube audience uh, in the year of 2019. So some notes before we get started. I did not see every 2019 film that was released, so there are going to be some popular titles that I just haven't seen. Down the road I might see them, but they won't be included on this list as of today. And these films are subject to change, so farther down the line I might like some of these movies a lot more. I might like some of them a lot less. Who knows, but for today, th this is just, um how it is for now. And also grades do not matter in this list, so you'll see some films that have a four and a half that might be higher than five star films, and you might see some four star films that might be lower than three and a half. It, it all varies, so um, grades don't matter in this list. It's more so of a favorites list than a best of the year list. I, I really hate that I have to discern between the two, but this is more of a favorites list than a best list, but I try to keep you know all the best ones together in my opinion. And this is all my opinion, so let's go ahead and start this 2019 Films Ranked video. The characters in this movie were so dumb and so idiotic. I didn't care for any of them one bit. The shark stuff was pretty hilarious though. I honestly don't even remember seeing this movie. This documentary was hardly interesting, and I didn't like that it focused a lot of time on AOC than all the other candidates that they were focusing on. I would have liked to get more screen time from those other people than just AOC, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so the music in this movie is not bad. Most of the music is not bad, but this was most certainly an experience unlike any other in the, in the theater this year. It was uncomfortable, weird, and just something that I hope to never see again. I would say that this is the biggest disappointment of the year for me. It had such a good idea and such a cool concept, but they really dug this film to the ground with terrible performances and a convoluted story that just basically made no sense to me. I, I did not get this movie at all. I also totally forgot I saw this movie in the theaters. Keanu Reeves was A-OK -okay in the movie, but the CGI work in this movie was very laughable. This was a movie that didn't really interest me all that much. I found all the new characters annoying, and even some of the returning characters too. It was more of a comedy than a horror flick, which wasn't what the first film set up the franchise to be like. I really liked the concept of the film, but a lot of the characters were pretty annoying to me, and the fact that they set up a sequel was just baffling to me. I don't know. I saw it. It was alright. This is just one of those disposable Netflix films that I pretty much forgot about in a day. There is some fun to be had with this movie, but it is pretty, pretty bad. John Cena and Keegan Michael Key do good in this movie, but it was quite unfunny and the ending, I mean, holy cow, talk about a cheesy ending. I wish this was a more memorable movie. The concept was really cool and I did have a fun time with this movie, it just, it just wasn't memorable to me. The main penguin in this movie that we followed was pretty awesome. Being able to see him wander around and not give a crap about anything was pretty entertaining. This really could have been so much better. This movie did get pretty annoying and the comedy was pretty bad and also the animation, especially for the human characters, was very, very odd. The characters in this movie were so dumb, so idiotic, but I would be lying if I didn't say I had a good time with this movie. The 
there's nothing really special with this movie. I think it has some good Christmas themes and messages, but like I said, it's just nothing really special. This was a really interesting documentary. I loved seeing the uh, Apollo 11 mission play out like a movie. I thought that was really interesting. Nothing about this movie was really memorable, but I was thoroughly invested in the movie. This is a good movie to watch with friends, and it really is creepy and eerie. It's just not a film that I'd want to rewatch a whole lot. There were some really interesting twists and turns throughout this movie, and the actors did a great job with the movie, but it was a bit dull, and nothing was super amazing to me. I love this documentary. Working at Disney is a dream of mine, and it was really cool to see just how many different types of roles and jobs that they have um, for you to be a cast member of Disney. I think it's really interesting and something I'd uh, love to watch again in the future. Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson do a good job together and it's a fairly entertaining movie, but there's really not much else to this movie. All the monster stuff was super cool to watch, but when it comes to the human characters, they're poorly acted, poorly written, and just not interesting at all. I got to see this movie uh, in the theaters with my friends, and it was such a cool experience at the theaters. This film knows what it is, and I had a super entertaining time with it. Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston do a very good job uh, in this movie. I thought there was a really good balance between those comedic moments as well as the dramatic moments too. This is a movie that worked really well when I first watched it, but I've honestly kind of forgotten about it. Maybe if I go back and rewatch this movie, I'll probably like this movie a bit more. I'm not a big fan of the first Secret Life of Pets movie, but for some reason I really like the second one. The animation was really good, and thankfully the characters were less annoying in this movie. I honestly enjoyed this movie more than I thought I would. I used to be big into Pokemon, not anymore, but I think Ryan Reynolds did a great job voicing the uh, character Pikachu. Production design for this movie was really good, and I think Eddie Redmayne and Felicity Jones give great performances in this film. It was also a really tense film, which was done very well. This wasn't the Lego movie sequel that I wanted, but it was still entertaining nevertheless, and Chris Pratt did an awesome job once again uh, voicing the character of Emmett. This was a really good time at the theaters. I wish it stuck with me more, but I love the relationship between um, Zach and Tyler, and I definitely wouldn't mind seeing it again. With films like Where'd You Go, Bernadette, Kate Blanchett is starting to become one of my favorite actresses. She did a really good job in this movie, and I thought it was a really interesting and investing story with great direction from Richard Linklater. This had more emotional weight to it than I expected, but I think Milo Ventimiglia, if that's how you pronounce his name, I thought he did a great job with this movie, and he was easily the best thing to come out of this film. With a rewatch, this will probably get bumped up on my list. I thought it was a very satisfying and great conclusion to the uh, How to Train Your Dragon films. This was honestly one of the biggest surprises uh, for me this year. I think Florence Pugh did a great job, and I really want to go back and watch this movie again. This documentary was super intense and super riveting. When I watched this movie, I saw it in the IMAX theater, and that's probably the best way to experience this film because it's just I was on my I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. So pretty much nobody's talking about this movie, but I thought it was a really beautiful and very well animated film, and I hope all of you guys go see it because I think it'll be well worth your time. Brie Larson's direction with this film was quite spectacular, giving us one of the most unique and original films to have uh, come out this year. The 
banter between the two title characters was very entertaining to watch, and I think all the action se sequences were very well filmed and also very entertaining to watch. Similar to The Unicorn Store, Robert Krasowski's direction in this film was really great, giving us one of the more unique and original films to have uh, come out this year. I don't know about y'all, but I really like this movie. The production design of the film and the style of the film was really great, and I think Tessa Thompson and Justin Thoreau did a great job voicing the characters of uh, Lady and the Tramp. I would say that the first one is a bit more fun to watch, but this was still an entertaining film nevertheless, and I think Karen Gillan was the big standout for me. Personally, I thought Brie Larson did a really awesome job with, uh, with the title character. I thought it was a really fun and entertaining film, and like I said, Brie Larson, she did a great job as uh, Captain Marvel. Tom Hanks literally became Fred Rogers in this movie. I think his performance was outstanding, and the direction of the film was really great too. I would recommend the documentary that came out last year over this one, but I still think that this was a very heartwarming experience nevertheless. This was honestly such a fun time at the theaters. In fact, it was one of the most entertaining films I saw all year. I thought all three actresses were great, especially Ella Balinska, I believe that's her name. It was a very entertaining time at the theaters, and based off the box office numbers, we probably won't get a sequel, but I really hope they do because this was a very entertaining film, and I'd love to see these characters return once again. This was the first film to have come out this year that I was slightly disappointed by, but with Rewatch, I liked it a lot more. Even though it may not have been the big climax I wanted um, to have ended this trilogy, I still thought it was an entertaining and investing film to watch. Yes, this film is this high up on my list. I thought it was a visually stunning film with some of the best graphics that I've ever seen. I love seeing the story of the Lion King play out once again, and I think the voice cast was phenomenal in their um, respected roles. This is one of the most underrated films I saw all year. This was such an entertaining time. I loved the adventure that, that these kids went on. It honestly made me feel like a kid again. And I really wish that they would um, be making a sequel to this, but based off the box office numbers, probably won't be the case, which is very, very sad in my opinion. This was such a refreshing comic book film. It didn't take itself too seriously, and I had lots of fun with it. Going into this film for the first time, I was worried about the comedy, and I was expecting it not to land, but to my surprise, it really did land. I thought it was a very funny movie, and I've really enjoyed watching this movie. Terrence Malick did it once again, you guys. Hidden Life was a very beautifully shot film with a great score, and all the performances were very excellent. I especially love the cinematography of this film, and I hope that uh, it gets nominated at the Academy Awards um, in the next couple months. So the original Aladdin is one of my all-time favorite films, and while this film is not even remotely close to the greatness that is that first film, I thought it was a still very entertaining film with lots of great musical performances with a great cast too. This is also another really underrated film of this year. I love the original Dumbo film, and I really like that this film kind of took its own spin on the story. The cinematography for this film is borderline criminal, and it's, it's honestly insane how good this movie looks. Ryan Johnson has proven himself to be one of the best directors that's working today. I love the characters in this film, I love the screenplay, the cast is fantastic. I especially loved Anna Darmus in this film. She was the big standout for sure. This was a film I never expected to be so good. Mark Ruffalo gave a really great performance, and the story itself was riveting from start to finish. I really hope Lulu Wayne gets nominated uh, for Best Director at the Academy Awards. I think her direction here was really great, and Aquafina gave one of the best performances I've seen all year. This was a really good, heartwarming film. I think the music of Bruce Springsteen was used very well in this film, and I think the family dynamics that played out on screen was really interesting to watch. 
I would say that this was the most intense film that I saw all year. Mads Mikkelsen gave a really great performance, and I was riveted from this film. My eyes were glued to the screen pretty much the entire time. All right, guys, now we have made it to the top 10 films of the list, my top 10 favorite films of the year. I really liked this film when I first watched it, but when I watched it again, I really liked it. I think the animation here is one of the best I've ever seen. I think animation with movies just keeps getting better and better each and every year. Uh, the musical numbers were super great. I think they exceeded the first one, and I really liked that this didn't really feel like a princess movie to me. I really love Frozen 2. I think it's one of the best Disney anime animated films to have come out. And yeah, I just really love this movie, and I keep wanting to go back and rewatch this movie because it's really that good. This film proves once again that we are living in the golden age when it comes to the Spider-Man character. Tom Holland has been doing an excellent job as Peter Parker and Spider-Man, and I think the character Mysterio in this film was really cool too. All the action sequences were very well filmed and lots of fun to watch. Greta Gerwig's direction here was phenomenal, and I love the story that played out on screen. I think the four main actresses plus Timothy Chalamet did amazing jobs in their roles, and I think, for me, Florence Pugh was the standout for me. She, this has really been her year uh, when it comes to film with Fighting With My Family, Midsummer, and now with Little Woman. I'm, I'm really excited to see where she goes from here, because she has proven herself to be a very talented actress. This is one of the best times I had at the theater this year. It was such a funny film, with many un unexpected emotional moments, too. This was such a creative and unique film, and I can't wait to watch this film again. Brad Pitt gave one of the year's best performances, and his character is one of my favorites this year, too. It's a film experience like no other, and it's been a real treat to be able to just watch and analyze this film. What an awesome movie, you guys. James Mangold's direction here was excellent. I think the performances from Christian Bale and Matt Damon were Oscar-worthy. I hope they get some sort of nomination for this movie. And I think that final Le Mans race was super entertaining and super riveting to watch on screen. Man, oh man, I love this movie so much, you guys. Was it necessary? No. But I think what we got was something really, really special, and I honestly can't view um, the Toy Story franchise without this movie in it. I absolutely love the character Fork in this film. He's become one of my favorite Toy Story characters. And I most especially love the character of Woody and seeing his arc finish with this film. Uh, it was something I didn't expect to have such a strong emotional aspect to, and I think they worked with that really well. The Toy Story films have meant so much to me throughout my lifetime, and to see it close one more time, maybe, who knows, with Toy Story 4, I couldn't be happier with, uh, with the way they wrap things up. Sometimes the perfect film comes out at the perfect time in your life, and that's exactly the case for yesterday. I really do not like Kate McKinnon in this film, but other than that, I think this has become a film that I honestly can't live without. I admire it so much, and I love the use of the Beatles music in this film. I was an avid listener of the Beatles before I watched this movie, but after seeing this movie, I really got into the Beatles. Their lyrics are insanely good, and I think they worked with that really well with this movie. Watching this film just makes me so happy inside, and I love the performances from Hamish Patel and Lily James. And Hamish Patel's character of Jack has also become one of the more uh, relatable characters I've seen in the past few years. This was a thrilling and epic conclusion to a saga that all started with Iron Man. The three hour long runtime hasn't bothered me at all, and I think they filled it. I think it was paced very well with lots of great action sequences, lots of great character moments, and just a very entertaining and thrilling story. Alrighty guys, so this is my favorite film of the year, and that is... Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. This is probably the most controversial placement of any film on this list. Yes, it is my favorite film of the year. So much has changed in the four years um, in my life ever since The Force Awakens. Um, when I watched that film as an 8th grader, and now closing out senior year with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker has just been quite the experience for me. This is the most I've ever loved the character of Rey and Kylo too, um, but the character of Rey, I absolutely loved her in this movie. 
I think the way that they wrap things up was perfect and very well done. I think there are so many cool moments that happen throughout this film. And like I said, I think it's a perfect way to conclude the saga that I've just been such a humongous fan of ever since I watched Force Awakens uh, four years ago. So there you guys have it. Those were my, uh, those were all the films that I saw in 2019 uh, ranked. Let me know some of your guys' favorites and least favorites in the uh, comments section of this video. I know having Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker at number one is not ideal, but I really do love that movie and I think it was a great movie. Um, so thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, be on the lookout for a movie collection video coming out in the next few days. I know everybody on the internet loves those types of videos, so I'm going to be releasing another one of those in the next few days. Um, I did just recently post a uh, most anticipated films of 2020 video, as well as a movie room tour video where I talk about all this that's behind me and in front of me too, so if you want to check those videos out, they're up on my channel. And be on the lookout for that video that's coming out in the next few days. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, and you can follow me on social media. I am on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. All the links for those can be found in the description of this video. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.